Hello, everybody. Welcome to the class. It's very, very nice to be here with you tonight, this Wednesday. So I hope everything was fine. Uh, here in Santana, it was not raining. I don't know if, it's, if it was raining where you were, but I hope everybody uh, had a very, very nice day. So, and uh, we're going to check about the attendance before we start the class, of course. So, Aida Isabel Lopez Bonilla. Present teacher. Good. Ana Veronica Hernandez Rodriguez. Present. Good. Blanca Isabel Tunaca de Rodriguez. Ernesto José Andrade Medina. Jonathan Ariel Figueroa Rivera. José Alfredo Hueso López. Juan Roberto Velázquez Romero. Present. Good. María Julia Ramos Olivar. Present, teacher. Good. Mónica Wendy Ávalos Girón. Present. Good. Oscar Mauricio Rivera González. Good. Oscar René Molina Calidonio. Oseas Figueroa Cisneros. Present. Good. Ramiro Rafael Aguilar Díaz. Roberto Carlos Áviles Rivera. Sí. Good, good. Sandra Yanira Gómez Romero. Present teacher. Good. Silvia Patricia Aceituno Méndez. Good. Verónica Elizabeth Burgos Rivas. Present. Perfect. Very well. So it's time to get into English. So let's see how it goes. Okay, we are almost halfway there, so this is the class of tonight, and uh, it says the six most common mistakes e-commerce makes in logistics. So, for first of all, uh, what is e-commerce? Do you remember what is e-commerce? Es comercio en línea, very good. Something like that. It's like uh, when you have a store online and you make business online. So the most common is that it's like a platform where you can purchase many things and then you have the, the product delivered to your house. So something like that is uh, what we have here. Uh, so we're going to check into that one. So this is the first one. It says too small or too large warehouse so from the title uh we know what is this about so let's see um let's see who's gonna read first the person alicate okay. okay let's see um uh, maria julia could you please help me reading this excuse me teacher uh, yes, uh, could you please help me reading? Okay. Too small or too large warehouse. The most fre frequent mistake made, made when investing in logistics is, is, is writing a um, warehouse that is too large. Of, of course, when starting out, it's not Unreasonable. To to assume that a business will maintain maintain its current sales growth, necessitating a warehouse big enough to store whatever inventory might be may be needed. But it can become a problem itself for for a for a scat 
pro probably to be too up to optimistic and the and the company is left paying for a space in Canon House, in Canon Use. Uh, please continue. Okay. Of course, it's just as easy to make the opposite the opposite mistake and rent a smile smile. Warehouse taking into account the scale, the scale of business at any given moment. As a smaller, smaller space could be a solution, but it's a poor long-term strategy. Uh, a small warehouse can quickly, can quickly become outgrown. Uh, so what kind Kind. Of, of a space will be suitable in the case of a business that not easily is scal scalable and this is especially especially true in in e-commerce in e-commerce it is worth considering outsourcing logistics by Re, re, raging to rely. On a, rely on a third party, party to handle the the, the detail of business. Uh, no veo. Ah, okay. Can, it says can pay for as much space as it needs and still have room to grow. Very good. Perfect. Thank you, Maria. Okay. So let's check what it says. Uh, according to the title, of course, uh, one of the biggest mistakes is that the warehouse is too small or too large. So definitely is a big problem. And it says the most frequent mistake made when investigating or investing, I'm sorry, in logistics is renting a warehouse that is too large. Of course, when starting out, it's not unreasonable to assume that a business will maintain its current sales growth. Okay, let's analyze here. But first of all, what is unreasonable? What is that? Unreasonable. Anybody knows? Inrazonable, teacher. Very good, that is it. So, uh, yes, when you start, uh, yeah, you want to grow, right? When you have the, the company and you start the company, your idea is to grow to have a large company so uh, yeah you would like to be ready for a large uh, amount of product but maybe it's not a good idea to have a too large warehouse right and then it says necessitating a warehouse big enough to store whatever inventory might be needed but it can become a problem if sales forecasts prove to be too optimistic. So what is forecast? Pronostico. Very good. So when you have a company, you need to analyze what is going to happen in the future. For example, right now, a lot of companies are getting ready for a Black Friday, right? Because they know that people are going to jump into the stores and buy many things. So, uh, they need to be ready with the warehouse, with the product, with the logistics, delivery, transportation, many things. They really need to be ready for that one. So uh, they need to forecast. They need to analyze in advance what is going to happen. Well, if sales forecast proof, what is proof? Prueba. Very good. So uh, if sales forecasts prove to be too optimistic and the company is left paying for space it cannot use. So that is very expensive. If you have a too large warehouse, then you are going to pay more than necessary. And your products and everything that you have is going to be more expensive. So definitely you need to analyze that. One. So in the second paragraph, it says, of course, it's just as easy to make the opposite mistake and rent a small warehouse. Of course, that, that is also another problem that you might think maybe we're not going to sell a lot of products. So I need just a small, small space. But what happens if 
you really need that space. I mean, if the forecast is not that realistic and you really are moving a lot of products, so you are going to have some customers without product, and that is not good. Taking into account the scale of business at, a, at any given moment, a smaller space could be a solution, but it's a poor long-term strategy. Uh, what is poor? Pobre. Very good. It's a poor <laughs> long term. Remember that long term is two years, three years, something like that. One. So it's not a good strategy in the long term. A small warehouse can quickly become outground. What is uh, outground? Do you know what is that? All right. So that is very easy. It's like Mm. Uh, yeah, it's like something like you imagine that you have a space for a hundred products and if you are selling very quickly 200 products, you are going to be outlawed, meaning that that is not enough, something like that. Okay. And in the last one, it says, so what kind of space will be suitable? What is suitable? Okay, suitable is like what is tailored, is made exactly to your need. Something like that is suitable, okay? So in the case of a business that's not easily scalable, you remember what is scalable, right? Something scalable is that you are going to grow, that you are going to sell more products. So you scale, scale up, right? So, and this is especially true in e-commerce. It's worth considering outsourcing logistics by relying. Do you remember what is relying? I'm sorry? Important. Something like that. What relying is that uh, when you trust in another company, in this case, it's like trust. So by relying on a third party to handle the details, a business can pay as much space as it needs and still have room to grow. Okay, so at the end, the analysis of all this, number one, is that you have to be very careful not to have a very large warehouse when you don't need it or not to have a very small uh, warehouse because maybe you are going to have more proud selling. So, and uh, it's probably the most common mistake in logistics, definitely. Uh, do you have any questions with any word? Okay. I'm not sure what, what you explain by relying and the first Frase, complete, complete frase, by rely on a third party. Uh, al confiar en una tercera compañía, confiar, rely. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. On a third party. Very good. Any other question? Okay. Let's check then. The number two, it says uh, chaos and lack of procedures. Oh, this is not good at all, definitely. Let's see. Um, Oscar, Rene, could you please help me with reading this? Good evening. Good evening. Okay, number two. Chaos. 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 Chaos and a lack of the producer procedures when not, procedures when not operating on a large scale. It's easy for a business 
to fall into the habit and hand handling to storage, packing, packaging in the shipment of its wall old inventory one upside or this and that personnel on the group can develop a feel for them and were hot however this type of knowledge is not based based on, based on any kind of object strategy in some someone get sick or lives for vacation boring nets bottle bottlenecks can occur when a business behind to pick pick out this kind of personnel that can suit suddenly 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 become a behind problem continue yes please okay a general mess in the warehouse is a very common problem among developing e-commerce. Say Rafael say Rafa is Ernest is not English. That's not English, that's true. <laughs> yes. Founder uh of Onipack. There before it's it's war it war using the help of logistics operate operators who have the experience and know how to help efficiently organize and client product process for the organization of transport through the acquisition of resources 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 and all the way to the prepare, preparation of adequate infrastructure in the warehouse. It's also extremely helpful to use a system that gives products on a unique core and uh, remembers its location when quantity quantity and even inspiration date very good perfect very good thank you so number two it says chaos and a lack of procedures so chaos is chaos right but the uh what is bch and lack of procedures what is lack do you remember that word falta de Falta de, very good, falta de procedimiento. See, mining, a big problem, that is a big problem for the company. You don't have the procedures, of course. It's going to impact the business. So it says, when not operating on a large scale, so large scale is like when you don't do big operations, right? When you are starting. It's easy for a business to fall into the habit of handling the storage, packaging, and shipping of its own inventor. So that is one PL, right? When you are starting, you don't hire another company. You do everything yourself. Uh, one upside of this is that personnel on the ground can develop feel for what is where, okay? Uh, well, you know what is upside, right? What is upside? Afuera. Oh, mm. dentro. Actually, Afuera. upside, something Afuera. like that. Yeah, uh, but that is outside. This upside is uh, like, um, how al can revés. I say? I'm sorry? Al revés. Uh, es algo como al revés, yeah. Un upside, pero es que al revés se dice upside down. Ah, ok. Upside Entonces, down. en este upside sería algo así como algo negativo, o algo que no, uh, is not... Uh, good developed something like that so one upside of this uh is that personal 
this is very important, personal, not personal, it's personnel. Okay. Very important that one. On the ground, what is on the ground? What is ground? Ground. Okay, when you say on the ground, it's en el piso, en el suelo, all right? On the ground can develop. Do you remember what is develop? Can be you. Desarrollo. Desarrollo. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. Develop a feel for what is where. Uh, however, this type of knowledge is not based on any kind of objective strategy. And if someone gets sick, or leaves for vacation, bottlenecks. Do you know what is bottlenecks? Cuellos, cuellos de botellas. Cuello de botellas. So, so oh, sometimes the procedures are like that one. Okay? Sometimes the procedures, they have bottlenecks when there is like a, like a lack of something. So, and this is a very common word in business. Bottlenecks can occur. When a business begins to pick up this kind of personal lack can suddenly become a big problem. So the meaning of the first one is that sometimes the people that work in a department or in something, they know everything in their mind. So uh, they know how to do things, but it's, there is no procedure written. So in my end, in my end that that person goes on vacation, other people, they don't know what to do because it's everything uh, made because of the experience, because of what they do or what they know. Uh, so that is not good. The company should be ready. So in case somebody goes away, uh, they can actually go and jump into that one, right? So that will be it. Uh, suddenly, do you remember what is suddenly? De repente. Very good. That's it. Right. So in the in the second one, it says a general mess. What is mess? Do you remember? Okay, mess mm -hmm. is disorder. So a general mess in the warehouse is a very common problem among developing e-commerce. Says Rafael Szczesniewski, founder. What is founder? No. Okay. Okay, founder is fundador. So he is the founder of the company. And the other is COO. Do you know what is COO? Another founder, uh, not a founder, but it's a chief. So, esas siglas significan chief operating officer. So, that's el jefe de operaciones global. So, that is chief operating officer in Omnipack. Of course, Omnipack is the name of the company. Therefore, do you remember what is therefore? Sin embargo, no. Okay, well, something like that. Well, in consequence, something like that. It's worth. Do you remember what is worth? Error. No, it's not that. It's very similar, the pronunciation, but it's a different word. So, worth is valer la pena. Vale la pena. Okay. So, it says it's uh -huh. worth using the help of logistic operators who have the experience and know how to help efficiently organize a client's product processes from the organization of transport through the acquisition of resources. Acquisition, what is acquisition? Acquisition, acquisition. Very good, acquisition. <laughs> The recursos. Very good. That is it. So it says, and all the way to the preparation of adequate infrastructure in the warehouse. Okay. Uh, the last one says, it is also extremely helpful to use a system 
that gives product a unique code and then remembers its location, quantity, and even expiration date. So at the end, another thing that sometimes happens in the companies is that sometimes they have a, an expert, one person that know how to do everything, but there are no procedures. What happens if that person goes from the company? A big problem will come, right? So because people there, they don't know what to do. So definitely that is another thing that is uh, causing a big impact. Okay, let's go to the next one. Um, familiar regulation. Uh, Ana Hernandez, could you please help me reading this one? Okay. Your familiar regulation. Another common problem is a lack of knowledge about any legal provision that apply to the business. One example is your familiarity with hygiene and sanitary Agen. control requirements. Again, again, okay. Again, and sanitary control requirements. It turns out that it's not only the seller of food or supplements who must take care of of, of this type of authorization is often also applies to toys and other children's items as well. Also product considered to be higher risk, including the sprays and aerosols. So popular in the cosmetic and pharmaceutical industry. Requires special permits and it is not just certification issues. A business must prepared in the warehouse and team to handle this and the other dangerous products. The staff must be trained and be should be formally say instruction in the warehouse on how to handle the product. The so-called safety, safety, safety data sheet says, mm, uh -huh. Sometimes it's even necessary to de dedicate okay. or and how dangerous it is the out. Okay, very good. So let's check into that. Oh. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, yes. Okay, so I'm familiar regulation. So unfamiliar, what is unfamiliar? Regulaciones no familiares. Very o leyes familiares. That is very good. So it says another common problem is a lack of knowledge about any legal provisions that apply to the business. So yeah, you need to understand all the legal aspects of your business. All the legal things that you uh, do when you, I mean, when you go to, uh, when you're going to send products to other countries or when you're going to receiving supplies from other countries. So you need to understand all the documentation, everything that is related to that. So that is definitely something that we really need. One example is unfam unfamiliarity with hygiene. Pronunciation on that one is hygiene. And sanitary control required. Definitely. So sometimes other countries, they are very careful about the products that they receive. So uh, the packaging uh, or uh, the cleaning list of some certain things. Sometimes you need to put some stickers on the product so everybody uh, there in the country understands what is this about. Many things like that. It turns out, oh, this is a very good one. It turns out. Do you know what is it turns out? Okay, this is very common in English, actually. When you say, it turns out, it's like when we say in Spanish, resulta que. So every time that you want to say, it uh, resulta que, if you have to, resulta que. So you can say, it turns out. It turns out that it's not only the sellers of food or supplements who must take care of this type of authorization. It often also applies to toys and other children's items as well. 
So that is a common mistake. Sometimes people, uh, when they send products or receive products from other countries. Sí, el otro está en el car. The car. Sí, el de este. This is the car. All right. <laughs> okay, so when uh, uh, when we think about this kind of authorizations or any permits, sometimes we believe it's only food or medicine, but no. I mean, that sometimes applies to many, many things. So we need to investigate. We need to research about those little things. Yeah, that is very, very important. Okay, so, uh, for example, in, in my experience, uh, I was telling you just uh, yesterday, I guess it was, uh, that sometimes I buy from eBay. I remember once I bought a katana, you know, uh, a Japanese sword. And I was very happy because it was, it was very cheap. But when the the sword came into the country, I didn't know that I have to pay not only the taxes, but I have to go and get a permission to introduce that one because it's considered a weapon. It's considered uh, un arma, right? So uh, at the end, I spent a lot of time doing that thing and uh, it was kind of crazy. But... Uh, it's because of that one. I mean, I didn't know that one. So we need to research and investigate about those things. Uh, let's continue. Then it says, uh, also products considered to be higher risk, including the sprays and aerosols, so popular in the cosmetics and pharmaceutical industries, require special permits. And it's not just certification issues. A business must prepare its warehouse and team to handle these and other dangerous products. So, I mean, cosmetics for us is something very normal, but remember that sometimes they contain alcohol or some things that can explode. So for example, a lotion or a, a, a spray or about something, if you leave that in the heat, that can cause a fire. So that is very dangerous. We need to be careful about that. And in the last paragraph, it says, the stuff, what is stuff? Como el equipo de colaboradores. Very good. So the staff must be trained and there should be formalized instructions in the warehouse on how to handle the product. The so-called, uh, this is good, the so-called, what is so-called? Así llamado o conocido. That is it, los así llamados, los así conocidos. Very good. Safety data sheet, says, uh, says Nielsky, sometimes it's even necessary to dedicate special zones in the warehouse, but it, it all depends on what product we store and how dangerous it is, he adds. So in general, uh, this number three speaks about legal aspects, permissions, regulations, certifications that you may need. So if you are going to go into an industry, into a product, uh, you need to do that. For example, Amazon, I mean, uh, for certain products, they have special areas and special teams that they check these specific products and they put in a special area and they handle this product in a different way than the rest of the products. Teacher, if, yep. if, you, want, if you want to start a, a restaurant uh, uh, in El Salvador, for example, uh, you, you must uh, have a lot of uh, requirements uh, and the uh, hygiene and the sanitary control or certifications. If you don't have this, uh, you don't start this this restaurant. That is true. Uh, yes, in El Salvador is very, very important uh, to, to have permissions in this one. It's not that easy. I believe that it's more and more difficult in other countries. I mean, other countries is very, very difficult. But now, I mean, I believe that nowadays is is more uh, the government they take more seriously these kinds of aspects. They go more into restaurants or any kind of 
business. I remember that in the past, I mean, you get the permission and that's it. It was more the more important the the commercial permission than the than the sanitary permission. But now that is very important. They have to be very careful of those things. The the, the government, if if you don't have this permission, the government uh, can mm -hmm. close the restaurant. That is true. Yeah, they, they can go and close it. I mean, and if they have, I mean, nowadays also you can call the, the government and say, you know, I see that a problem then that in that restaurant happening and they come and they visit the restaurant. So it's a very interesting thing. Very good. Any, thank you, uh, Ernesto. And uh, any questions uh, here in this paragraph? Not for me, teacher. It's clear. Very good. So this is the continuation of that. Let's see who's going to read. Uh, Blanca, could you please help me reading this slide? Okay. More problems arise when you enter premiums are unclear about provision for complaints about their subcontractors. A, a key core companies and neglect to assert their rights. This ignorance is unfortunate as the, ma the match to the product during transport. For example, is a common of currency. A uh, business needs to work that the courier company is obligated, obligated to published. accept uh, published uh -huh. to accept a complaint with within seven days of delivery delivery. Of course, a courier may very often challenge such an accusation. That is why the acceptance, acceptance protocol is an obligatory element of every dispatch process. Such protocols, protocols are the industry standard for professional logistic operators. Often, for us, confirming the condition of the package are also necessary as well as a record of oversight. Very good, perfect. Thank you very much. So uh, it says more problems arise. Do you remember what is arise? Elevar. Uh, surgir. Surgir. Very good. So more problems arise when young entrepreneurs. Do you remember what is entrepreneurs? Emprendedores. Very good. Entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs are unclear about provisions for complaints. Uh, what is complaints? Do you remember? A queja. Queja. Very good. So uh, sometimes that happens. Uh, the entrepreneurs are unclear about provisions for complaints about their subcontractors. ACA, do you know what is ACA? Alias. Alias. Mm, something like that. Very good. ACA eh, significa also known as. También conocido como. Also known as. So also known as career companies. And neglect. What is neglect? Neglect. Okay, neglect. Um, maybe in Spanish we don't have that word, but it's something like uh, ser negligente, cuando no se hace algo correcto. That is neglect. No tenemos una palabra en español, pero por ahí va. So, and neglect to assert their rights. Uh, what is assert?
Okay, in this case, it's like a ser valer. Uh, so uh, they assert their rights. Neglect era la que decía que no había como traducción. No hay una palabra exacta en español, pero por ahí va neglig ser negligente. Ah, negligente, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Le vale. Okay. Oh, o no sabe cómo hacer las cosas a veces. So, that will be. Uh, so, neglect to assert their rights. So, sometimes what that happens, uh, because they don't know, because they are new in the business, they don't know uh, how to create a contract or how to manage certain things. Uh, they fail to check into this. And it says this ignorance is unfortunate as damage to the product during transport, for example, is a common occurrence. A business needs to know that the courier company is obliged. What is obliged? Obligado. Sure. Obligado, that is it. So you say obliged. You don't say obligated. That is something different. You say obliged. Obliged to accept a complaint within seven days of delivery. So remember that within is entre, entre siete días hábiles of delivery. Uh, of course, a career may very often challenge such an accusation. That is why the acceptance protocol is an obligatory element of every dispatch process. What is dispatch? Como en español, despachar. So that will be when you give a product, so it's delivered. Such protocols are the industry standard for professional logistic operators. Often, photos confirming the condition of the package are also necessary, as well as a record of oversight. What is oversight? Oops, sorry. So, oversight is como un record de Vigilancia, something like that. Okay, so you when you oversee something is when you are watching, when you are taking care of something. So this is actually very common. Uh, for example, do you remember what happened with the submarine, with the millionaire people that they went into the ocean and they died? So exactly this happened because these entrepreneurs they didn't follow the standards of security. They created, they built the uh, submarine with not the regular conditions. They did that uh, in the way that they believe it was. So since they didn't follow the standards, they didn't follow the rules, they didn't follow the regulation, of course, uh, this happened. And this is, I mean, in my end, they lose their lives. Yes, people die in that situation. So, I mean, this is very important. That's why we have standards. That's why uh, we need to re uh, research and follow the certifications and the standards because they are there because of a reason. So it's, it's very, very important. So do you have any questions in this slide? These two paragraphs, teacher, have a lot of new words. A lot of new words is very interesting, right? So yeah, right now I was reading and yes, I, I realized, in mind, in mind that you don't see the words. And in mind that somebody's saying these words, I mean, obviously this to know what the career company is obliged to accept the complaint within seven days of the business. Probably you don't understand, right? So this is why uh, new vocabulary is very, very important. Very good, and, and not only uh, the vocabulary itself, but the pronunciation, right? Because uh, some people um, here in the class, we read very slow, very relaxed, but some people, sometimes they read like that one. Right? A business needs to know what the career company is obliged to accept the complaint within seven days of delivery. Of course, the career very, very often. I mean, if that happens, yeah, you are like, 
my goodness, what is that, right, right? But when that happens, just try to get the general idea. That is fun for me. Good, let's continue. Uh, this one is going to be for Veronica Elizabeth. Okay. Still, few beginners seller realize that the implementation of e receipt will help them save both time and effort. Since the law requires that you add a printed receipt for each shipment, why? not automate this element by displaying a digital receipt and the time the order is processed. This is a simple solution and ensure that is the event of increased order. The fiscal cash register does not slow the whole process down. Very good. So still, do you remember what is still? Aún. Aún. In this, in this case, it could be some aún así. Few beginner sellers. What is beginner? Iniciándose. Principiantes. Principiantes. Very good. Those are. Uh, still, few beginner sellers realize. What is realize? Realiza. Mm, actually, this is a very. That's a point. Very good. That's a point. Entonces sería algo así como darse cuenta, se dan cuenta. Y este es un, un, un error muy común en inglés. A veces realize, pensamos que es realizar, but it's not. Es darse cuenta. I realize, say. Ah, me doy cuenta. All right. I realize. I, I realize. realize. Okay. <laughs> so, a few beginners, uh, beginner resellers realize that the implementation of e-receipts what is e receipt? Receiving cosas por internet. Receipt is recibos. Sería recibos electrónicos. Okay. So that is e receipt. Implementation de la facturación electrónica sería. Exactly. So it will help them save both time. An effort. What is effort? Esfuerzo. Very good. Esfuerzo. Since the law requires that you add a printer receipt for each shipment, why not automate this element by displaying a digital receipt at the time the order is processed? Actually, this is a very good idea. So when you buy something, uh, sometimes you enter your email or your phone number, and then you receive the email. In the email, the receipt immediately. So this is a very important part. So this is a simple solution and ensures that in the event of increased orders, the fiscal cash register does not slow the whole process down. What is slow? Slow down. Lento. Lento. Desacelerar. That's sort of is something like that. Frenar the whole process. What is whole? Whole. Whole. Cualquier. Cualquiera. No. Completo. No. Entero. Completo. Oh, Very completo. good. Completo. Como completar el proceso. So if you do, uh, I mean, nowadays, uh, when you, uh, when you are thinking about business, e-commerce, and things down, of course, everything is online. So it's much easier that everything goes to the email or to the uh, phone number so you get all the information about the products that you purchase. And also you, the company, you can also get a digital receipt that is going to go to your to your stores, storage or things like that. That would be very good. Any questions on this? Not for me, teacher. Very good. Interesting, lots of new words here. <laughs> Number four, let's see. This is going to be for, let's see who has some plan. Ernesto, help me reading this. Okay, teacher, not enough or too many employees. The lack of a plan for the beginning of a high demand season very often ends up 
with the owner spending 24 hours a day in the warehouse packing shipment. This is the time that could be invest in marketing and developing the business. We ourselves have made these mistakes. That's why we want to protect other online entrepreneurs from similar situations, says Tomek Kaspersky, founder and C CEO Omnipack. I still remember one Christmas Eve, which we spent with Rafael delivering package, packages to various career points and parcel machines. An opposite, yet equally border, burdensome situations may be over investing, i.e. employing to large a team with the thought that soon there will be a lot of work for them to do. Furthermore, you often forget about emergency planning, not being prepared for random situations, such as an accident, a computer crash, or an influenza epidemic in the company. A small random case like this can cause company-wide paralysis. Very good, perfect. So a lot of information here, very nice. Not enough or too many employees. This is another problem. Actually, you see that when a crisis comes to a company, this is one of the most common um, results, right? For example, Amazon, I remember that uh, this year, they uh, they fired a lot of employees. Microsoft, they did the, the same. Google, they did the same. So that happens, that happens uh, sadly, right? So it says, the lack of a plan for the beginning of a high demand season very often ends up with the owner spending 24 hours a day in the warehouse packing uh, shipments. Definitely. So that is 24 hours a day, <laughs> all the day, right? So it's not good. This is the time that could be invested in marketing and developing the business. Uh, we ourselves have made these mistakes. That's why we want to protect other online entrepreneurs from similar situations, says Tamek Persky, founder and CEO Omnipod. What is CEO, you know? Director. That is actually in Spanish. So he's the chief executive officer. So that is the boss, right? That is El Mero Mero. So that would be it. El Mero so, Mero. Yeah. El Macizo. That's the one. The chief executive yeah. officer is that is the one, right? The one. <laughs> el jefe, el jefe de jefe. Exactly. That is the the one, I mean. <laughs> the one that takes the final decision. So and it says, I still remember one Christmas Eve. What is Christmas Eve, you know? Right, that is a very good question. Christmas Eve is Vispera de Navidad, o sea, el 24 de diciembre. Porque Navidad es el 25. Entonces, 24 es Christmas Eve. Ah, teacher, this is, this is Noche Buena. Noche Buena, yeah. Um. So that is it, Christmas Eve, which we spent with Rafael, delivering packages to various career points and parcel machines. Imagine that one. In mind that in, in Christmas Eve on the 24th at 10, 11 p.m. at night, you are still working in the company. That is not good, right? That means that you need more employees, at least for that season, right? Because as we were discussing, sometimes there are some seasons where the companies, they need uh, more resources. Not only more employees, but more warehousing space, more transportation resources, many of these things. So 
definitely that is something that we need to consider about our place as well. And then it says, an opposite, yet equally burdensome. Do you know what is burdensome? Okay, so burdensome is like uh, bad, very bad. So something equally bad. It's a fancy word for that one, okay? Uh, yet equally burdensome situation may be over-investing. So having more employees. In example, whenever you see IE, siempre que vean IE es in example, okay? So in example, employing too large a uh, team with the doubt that soon there will be a lot of work for them to do. Furthermore, what is furthermore? Okay, además. Furthermore, very nice, this word, right? Se dan cuenta, hay muchas palabras que serían raras, pero son simples. So, cuando estamos redactando en inglés, these words are very this, important. This is connector. Exactly. It's a connector. So, whenever you see that word, you know what is going to happen. Very good. So, furthermore, you often forget about emergency planning. Not being prepared for random situations such as an accident a computer crash, or an influenza epidemic in the company. A small random case like this can cause company-wide paralysis. Definitely. Well, let's check uh, some words. Uh, what is random? Al azar. Very good. So, in any order, right? Random. Uh, a small random case like this can cause company-wide paralysis. So you don't know what is going to happen, right? You don't know if, I know, well, for example, this exactly happened for the pandemic, right? The companies, they were not prepared for this. So when the pandemic attacked and everybody had to, to stay at home, uh, sometimes the company, they have to reinvent to uh, create different procedures for these specific situations because they didn't know what to do, right? So it's, it's a very important thing. Good, do you guys have any question about this slide? No, for me to check. Very good. So let's check the next one, number five. A lack of or just the wrong IT system. Oh, definitely, this is something that can impact. Jose, I ask, could you please help me with this? Okay, a lack of or just the wrong IT system. When running a small business, we often do not have the resources to invest in IT systems. It may even seem, seem justified not to spend the money. If the current business business size does not require any automa automation, automation of process, but over time, a lack of improvements can have a negative impact on any business, especially in financial areas and customer relations. The lack of a co coherent system of coding and tracking products can quickly and in mistakes when completing shipments for customers. However, not only will customers be dissatisfied with these states of affairs, but also incorrect product coding is a loss for any store. Very good, perfect. So it says a lack of or just the wrong IT system, information technology system, of course. So when running a small business, we often do not have the resources to invest in IT systems. That is true. When you are a new company, sometimes you do everything yourself, right? Or you have one person that maybe is your partner doing this. 
it may even seem justified not to spend the money if the current business size does not require any automation of processes. What is automation? Anybody know automation? Automatization. Oh. Very good, that is it. But over time, a lack of improvements can have a negative impact of an e-business, especially in financial areas and customer relations. So, yes, at the beginning, if you are a small company, yes, it's fine if you don't have an IT system. But if you start scaling up, definitely you need to invest in that. The lack of a coherent system of coding and tracking products can quickly end in mistakes when competing shipments for customers. However, not only will customers be dissatisfied with this state of affairs, but also incorrect product coding is a loss for any store. Definitely. Uh, a question here, what is dissatisfied? Insatisfaction. Very good. And then it says affairs. What is affairs? Es okay. como eventos? No. Mm, very good, something like that. Affairs, this is a very common in, a word in English. So when you say, for example, I have an affair with this company. Uh, yo tengo una situación, tengo algo. Uh, y no, no, asuntos. Tengo un asunto y no damos mayor explicación. So we can use affairs. I have an affair. También se utiliza cuando uh, hay una relación amorosa, pero eso es en, en cuestión personal. Pero en compañías, in business language, affair is like a situation that you have, a, a, a business maybe, or something like that. Teacher, es válido decir, um, don't hinder in my affairs. Uh, could you please repeat the question? Don't hinder. Uh, ah, yeah. My... Yeah, you can say that. Yeah, no problem. So, a fair. Uh -huh. Yeah, fair is. Yeah, uh, lo más común para decir esa frase es mind your own business. <laughs> that is the most okay. common. Uh, but uh -huh. yeah, you can say something like that as well. Okay. Very good. All right, do you have any questions on number five? No, teacher, me, thank teacher. you. Teacher, are you? Okay. Um, I why we use it, the E. Is it to refer to online business or digital marker, marketing? Uh, uh, you say IT? E, E, e-commerce, e-business. Ah, yeah. Uh-huh. Is this uh, yeah. reference uh, um, marketing digital or business and, and lie? Or, uh, yes. When, yes. When you when you see the word E and then another one is electronic. Uh, okay. So that is online. Everything that is online. For example, e-business is electronic business. That means okay. that everything is online. Uh, teacher, in this case, IT is inter uh, 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 information technology. That is correct. Information technology. Thank you. Very good. Good. Any other question? Nice. Let's move on with the next. Let's see who is going to be right now. Um, Monica Avalos, is it possible for you to read? Yes. Okay. Eh, sería desde el inicio, ¿verdad? Yes, please. Imagine that we ordered the same product from three different wholesalers to say, organize, we should have or um, fail for every single type of product, then at the moment when we register a lack of goods, we can order, 
we can order it from the proper warehouse. Uh, however, commonly a lack of IT system and spare, spare time creates a temptation, temptation to cup corner. It's not uncommon for a store to copy fails from a warehouse, which means that one type of product may, may have up to three different levels. This will cause unnecessary orders and costs. What's more, an insufficient IT, a, IT. it IT systems doesn't allow inter integration with e-commerce platform, resulting in a delay in the trans transmission of information, especially for cost customers who are waiting for their package. A lack of tracking, which allows the customers to check the status of the order ends with a increases number of emails or calls with the questions about the shipments and an increased amount of work. Very good, perfect, thank you. So it says, uh, this is also related with IT of course. Imagine that we order the same product from three different wholesalers. Uh, this is a very common situation, of course. And remember the wholesaler is a, a part of the logistics, right? A distributor. To stay organized, we should have our own file for every single type of product. Then at the moment when we register a lack of goods, so when we don't have inventory of that, we can order it from the proper warehouse. Now that is interesting. However, commonly a lack of IT systems and, and spare time creates, what is spare time? Do you know what is spare time? It's como adicional. Una... Mm, well, spare time is uh, cuando uno quiere ahorrar tiempo. That is spare time. Uh, it says creates a temptation to cut corners. Ah, that is another interesting. Cut corners. Do you know what is cut corners? Okay, this is a very common expression also. When you say cut corners, it means uh, cortar el presupuesto de algo, o cortar, hacer algo, no hacer algo. So the temptation here is uh, that you can say, no, I'm not going to invest in IT system um, because it's going to be easier for me and uh, not that expensive. I'm going to save some money, but it's not. Right? It's not uncommon for a store to copy files from a warehouse, which means that one type of product may have up to three different labels. What is labels? Do you remember? Etiquetas. Very good. So this will cause unnecessary orders and costs. Definitely. What's more, an insufficient IT system doesn't allow integration. What is allow? Permitir. Permitir. Very good. Nice. Allow integration with e-commerce platforms, resulting in a delay in the transmission of information, especially for customers who are waiting for their package. A lack of tracking, which allows the customer to check the status of the order, ends with an increased number of emails or calls with questions about the shipment and an increased amount of work. Uh, what is tracking? Do you remember what is tracking? Seguimiento. So nowadays, when you order a product or anything like that, um, you are able, you are able to track 
the Dawa in real time, right? So you know that it's in China and that is in Singapore, and then it goes to Colombia and then goes to El Salvador. So you are able to track those. And that is very important for customers nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any questions on this? I'm sorry, which one? And. E -N -D -N. Yes. Uh, I don't uh, see. The penultima, the penultima linea. Uh, Ends. Uh, finaliza, termina. Finalmente. Uh, oh. Someday. Yeah. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Any other question? Shipment. I don't remember. Of course. What is shipment, my friends? Embarque. Embarque, envío. Ok. Good. Any other question? Teacher, eh, what is mean delay? Ah, there is a very eh, good sí. question. Delay. Retardo. 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 Uh -huh. Retraso. 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 Uh -huh. So nobody wants delays, right? Nobody really wants delays. Definitely. Your flight is delayed. Delayed. This uh, is very common. No, for no the good. <laughs> yeah, it's very common. <laughs> and for the holidays in Christmas, that is very, very common. <laughs> uh, in December, almost all the flights are delayed. So uh, definitely delayed. something that happens. <laughs> it becomes delayed. I, I answered that. Uh, the manager in Spirit Airlines. <laughs> no, Spirit is, is common. It's common. Hey, no problem. Really. <laughs> yeah, that is true. That is true. So it's very common that the flights are delayed because of many situations. But yeah, for for the for you as a customer, it's not good, right? But I mean, you can do anything about it. The ship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's go to the to the number six. That is the last one. Let's see who's going to read right now. Uh, Ramiro, help me reading up this one. Yes, teacher. My pleasure. Expensive cap packaging. Packaging. A basic mistake uh, is to assume that for the packaging, 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 packaging to be attractive, it must be expensive. However, high quality doesn't have and to mean expensive. The basic rule in is the elimination of poor quality, repeatedly wrapping and package with uh, adhesive tape or a stretch wrap will not improve its uh, aesthetic appearance. Another principle connected not so much with missile visual issues but rather with the effective securing of a shipping or a shipment is the awareness uh, of how a safety material will uh, be had during the trans during transport for example is we want to secure secure a small product to the walls uh, of the container to prevent it, the, it from bouncing, the proper type of packing, of packing material is essential. What is why an employee's training uh, is so important. Important. No, no frequently, in good faith, for example, worker will grab a fragile product with bubble grab to strengthen the protection but in reality uh, it do, doesn't not, not change anything except to the increase the consumption of material and cost very good perfect thank you so expensive packaging is another mistake right you don't need expensive packaging unless you are sending a very luxury uh product i don't know a tablet a smart watch those yeah the, the wrapping or the packaging is very nice, but in general, sometimes the at least the external packaging has to 
be that expensive. So it says a basic mistake is to assume that for the packaging to be attractive, it must be expensive. However, high quality doesn't have to mean expensive. The basic rule is the elimination of poor quality. Repeatedly wrapping a package with a tape or stretch wrap will not improve its aesthetic appearance. Um, what is aesthetic? Aesthetico. Aesthetico. And the other one, it says repeatedly. What is repeatedly? Repetir, repetidamente. Very good, repetidamente. And wrapping, what is wrapping? Wrapping. Envolver? Envolver, very good, nice. So it says um, another principle connected not so much with visual issues, but rather, what is rather? Do you remember what is rather? Raro? Mm. Escasamente, no. Eh, no. Ra Más que? Mm, something like that. Yeah. Uh, rather is, uh, well, let me check. Pero en lugar de, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. With effective securing of shipment. If uh, is the awareness, what is awareness? Conscience. Very good. Is the awareness of how a safety material will behave. What is behave? Comportarse. Very good. Comportarse during transport. So remember that the packaging, yes, it has to be nice, but not expensive. And remember that the most important uh, objective of the packaging is safety. That the product arrives to the consumer in a good condition. That is the most important objective. For example, if we want to secure a small product to the walls of the container to prevent it from bouncing, uh, what is bouncing? Es, eh, eh, cuando saltan las cosas, prevenir el, 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 el salto, el rebote. Rebotar, very good. That is bouncing. The proper type of packaging material is essential. That is why an employee's training is so important, not infrequently, in good faith. For example, workers will wrap a fragile product with bubble wrap. What is bubble wrap? Es el plástico con burbujitas. Ese que nos gusta apretar. So that is the uh, bubble wrap. Good. Uh, to strengthen. What is strengthen? Fortalecer. Very good. To strengthen the protection. But in reality, it does not change anything except to increase the consumption of materials and costs. So, uh, definitely. Remember that um, the most important is the safety of the product. Of course, nice. It has to be nice, but not expensive. So, it, hasn't, it doesn't have to be very expensive. Good, do you have any questions on this slide? For me, it's clear, teacher. Good, clear as horchata, nice. As horchata. <laughs> Very good, so as you can see today, we were talking about e-commerce, logistics in e-commerce. So we're going to do a little small group, uh, uh, activity, okay? So what we're gonna do is that we're going to work with some peers in the uh, breakout rooms and we're going to research what are the best e-commerce platforms in the world, okay? So research which ones are the best ones and why. And then you are going to tell the class, okay? Do you have any questions about the activity? Not teacher. Research, uh, what is the the best e-commerce in the world and the why? And why, yeah. 
you can the, you can speak about one or two so you can compare okay okay in the world in the world yeah okay teacher nice so i'm going to create the breakout rooms right now and let's see how it goes
esperar que venga el teacher. Teacher, excuse me, we need to share my uh, screen. Of for, course. Uh, for my, thank you. Okay, perfect. I did it already. You can do it. Okay, re yes, it's ready. Thank you. Okay. Okay, classmate, do you can see my...
Very good. Welcome back. So we are going to continue and check what you have researched. Uh, the first group is Ernesto and Oscar René. Oh, okay, okay, teacher. Uh, the Oscar uh, showed the, the, a brief presentation about our research about e-commerce, e-commerce logistic. Uh, when when right in Google, uh, the the most famous e-commerce in the world teacher in the second place in the world uh, is the Mercado Libre. Uh, Mercado Libre teacher um, has twenty one point zero six million persons. Uh, with season or with visit, that visit in this in this page, uh, very very famous. Uh, you can buy products, a lot of product, and you can sell a lot of product. But um, Oscar Rene uh, explained um, uh, more details for this this page. Uh, go ahead, Oscar. Yes, uh, the page is uh, functional. Functionality is um, in Latin America. Latin America is the uh, big clients real the world. And and cyber cyber e-commerce and cyber Monday and this is the, the page. This is the page is the more offered and different food, uh, products and different uh, brands and invite and, and offer the products. It's a different. It's open, open uh, uh, commercial, commercial different products. For example, and and a ver, supermarket and eh, factories and repuestos no sé cómo se dice sí repuestos eh? sí. repuestos repuestos eh, refactions Eh, todo lo que pueda imaginar. ¿Cómo se dice, Werner? Every, every. Everything you can imagine. You can imagine. Yes. The, the people. Uh -huh. No, the people search this page, and if you if you watch in the in the last slide, the a lot of advertising is promote your product or your service in this in this Mercado Libre. Yes, yeah. it's a different, different for, uh, for, for for example, in the on the on the left uh, in your in your in your PPT, for example, uh, you can buy for only uh, four hundred ninety nine subscribe. Uh, for example, Disney Star Plus. Uh, in in different in different advertising or product or service. Yes, it's a, a many category. Okay, interesting. Yes. Uh, by withdraw mobile, find the uh, what the new the need and coordinate payment and delivery with the seller. It's easy and fast. We can all do it. And receive your products, agree of the delivery of your purchases with the seller. You can receive it at your home, at your office of pick, picking up. You decide what you prefer. The number one is Amazon and 100, 105 point. Set millions 
the the people cry run in the world the number two mercado libre is a ninety one point zero six million the the people or the clients they using the platform in e-commerce And I can uh, I can uh, talk for the the Mercado Libre for the Amazon explain the teacher in another class is now redundant redundant in information it's a new new information is compared for design at the the e-commerce uh, it's a new a new platform. For the know and people. Yo, yo, yo lógicamente no sabía eso. Okay. Era una de las más grandes. Yes. Ahí yes. está el number three AliExpress, number four Walmart en línea, number six Coppel, number seven Liverpool, number seven from Descuentos y ocho Home Depot, the United States. This is the presentation for the investigate for e-commerce, right, real of the world. Very good, interesting, very uh, nice. Yeah, Mercado Libre is very big in Latin America. Thank you very much for that one. Okay. So the next right. one is uh, Maria Julia and Silvia Patricia. Okay. Check. One minute, please. Of course. I start. Yeah. We okay, but we stay in in my country in El Salvador. In in our opinion, is uh, in logistic is 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 seem to 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 use that in El Salvador, in, in other cities, for example, Santa Ana, Aguachapán, San Miguel, and especially in San Salvador. For, for, for me, Pedido Ya is other the best logistic and electronic commerce platform. Because it's a distribution, a, a trade contract for the product, from a large number of business, but formal company and uh, entrepreneurs. Um, and, and help uh, to, sell, to sell product. On the Pedido, um, on the Pedido Ya sell platform and companies and entrepreneurs uh, promote their product and um, Pedido Ya take care of the logistic of transportation and the delivery of the product to the customer from the business to delivery to to the customer. Um, in addition, the orders are already worth as the intermediary uh, between companies and customer and church uh, commission for the product sales is a uh, pedido ya is platform uh, a good platform is silvia patricia okay the other platform uh, that we search is in the business local for example the super selectos app is the other best platform because it covers the basic needs 
uh, that people have when shopping for food and hygienic materials for the home. Uh, in this platform, allows it to give its customer greater facilities so that they can make their purchase online, uh, either for the home or there's or to pick up in sales room. The main purpose is that people do not have having to go to the supermarket and can use the time in other activities and avoid long lines in some supermarket. Okay, very good. Yeah, very interesting. And yes, Pedro Ja is one of the largest. Very good. Thank you for the research. Okay. Okay, the next one is Blanca, Naka, and Jonathan. Figure out. Okay, good evening, Hi. everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, we have made uh, some brief uh, research like the others. Uh, I don't know, Blanca, if you can. Yes, thank you. Uh, if you want, you can start and maybe I can go next. Okay, I can start. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, in my team, we choose the uh, we choose the e-commerce Alibaba. Uh, Alibaba, uh, it's an e-commerce that was found in two thousand ten. And it uh, e commerce allows uh, connect very effectively uh, to suppliers and customers. Uh, the advantage uh, of this platform is that it's without intermediaries and it allowed. Uh, maintain low prices and that is very attractive. You can continue, Blanca. Okay. Uh, Alibaba, uh, for e-commerce, it is a well-developed platform which allow the, the connection between suppliers and customers without intermediaries, allowing has to offer both as very low price. Uh, the Alibaba, uh, but excuse me, the AliExpress uh, for for uh, e-commerce is is the platform in in level uh, world world level. Thank you. Very good, perfect. Thank you, AliExpress. Yes, that is one of the biggest as well. Nice. Uh, next one is okay. Monica, Ramiro, and Veronica. Good evening, classmate. Uh, we search uh, in the um, in the web in the web. Uh, how is the uh, looking the best platform for e-commerce, and how do you do it? Okay. Um, uh, begin, uh, begin, uh, Monica, to the uh, uh, our uh, investigation. Uh, hello, um, with the right tools, it's easy for any small business to quickly start selling on and join the Gold's Rush. And with uh, the same e commerce website builder, we can list any products take payments and handle shipping all without leaving the comfort of your home office okay in researching uh, in this uh, in the websites we look at many different options for the building e-commerce online there are solutions for every kind of business for independent creatives to the multinational corporation 
But for this, uh, we focus it on platform that the best fit the necess uh, the needs of a small or medium business, like uh, Amazon, uh, Target, uh, Walmart, but especially those new exploring selling online or selling physical products. Uh, this season, to say we uh, we pick uh, one uh, one work to, uh, for the other kinds uh, of the businesses, but is uh, we are selling a couple of dollars a month worth of business preset or many million worth of goods. You, uh, you might want to look elsewhere, like uh, the last uh, uh, the last uh, e-commerce. Uh, uh, right now, uh, Veronica, the, the continue, please. Okay. Okay, for typical small and medium business looking to sell physical product online, or at least a mix of physical and digital products, we identify five key features that every platform has to offer. There are other good platforms out there, but if they don't offer a future of the business, they didn't make the good ad, they are likely to niche it for most business. Okay, teacher, we are not talking about a business specific, but I how I I about, about how to create an adequate platform to do business online. Very good, interesting. Yes, actually, this is very good information. Thank you very much for sharing. Teacher, okay. teacher. Yep. Uh teacher. Go ahead, Monica. Ah, uh, este, I want to talk about my experience. Uh, when I start, uh, when I, I started uh, working at Calvanisa, my area was e-commerce. I have to sell from plat platform, which they have invested a lot of money. But when we started selling from the from that, uh, the platform didn't work because it was very complicated uh, to, re to re re register or make an order an order even some payments were lost and four months later they were founded and finally we uh, stopped selling from the platform and no, only sell from the WhatsApp. Okay, very interesting. Yeah, sometimes it's kind of complicated, but this is a very good example on how to build a platform, which is not that easy, right? Thank you for sharing. Okay, the next group is Jose Alfredo, Juan Roberto, Mauricio Rivera, and Roberto Carlos. Okay, teacher, uh, today we are going to talk about uh, Alibaba a big e-commerce. Alibaba is a Chinese e-commerce platform. The company was founded in 19, 1999 by Jack Ma. It offers search, search engines for shopping and it also has its own electronic payment service called Alipay, similar to PayPal. Its services are offered all over the world. The product materials offered on Alibaba are clothing, electronic accessories, food, toys, and more. And that's all. Thank you. Okay, very good. Interesting. Thank you very much for sharing that one. Uh, the next group is Aida and Sandra. Good evening, teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have a presentation, but we made a research about the different uh, e-commerce Sandra is going to mention. Yes, yes, uh, teacher, we look up for some of the most um, recognized e-commerce in the world. Is uh, uh, mention other 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 partners, uh, Amazon, uh, AliExpress, Mercado Libre, Alibaba, Shein. Um, Aida, with his uh, brief 
education about e-commerce. Aida? Okay. Uh, first of all, we need to understand what is uh, e-commerce. Uh, it consists of distributing, selling, buying, and marketing and providing information of product or serve uh, through the internet. If, uh, we have the example that Sandra has mentioned. Um, okay, these um, e-commerce are very famous around the world because they have a lot of products uh, for sale. For example, you can find home and garden, fashion, okay. uh, electronics, beauty, and so on. Um, in most of the case, for example, in the case of the Alibaba, you can buy a big product, for example, cards, but I suppose that is more complicated to deliver this kind of product, but they have big, uh, I'm sorry, they have a, a small product as well. For example, in the case of the a beauty, uh, electrodomestic and something like that. And uh, that's all, teacher. Thank you. Very that's good. Perfect. Teacher. Thank, you. Thank you very much for sharing. Last group is Ana Hernandez and Oseas. Hey, good evening. Mm -hmm. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, mm -mm. We present the best e commerce platform. So, next slide, uh, Osteas, please. Amazon is an American multinational technology company focusing on e commerce, cloud computing, online advertising digital streaming and artificial intelligence. It has been often referred to as one of the most influential economical and cultural forces in the world. And often regard has one of the world's most valuable brands. It is considered to be one of the big five American technology companies alongside Alphabet, pre-rent company of Google, Apple, Meta, and Microsoft. Continue, please, Oseas. Okay. So we are talking about Amazon, uh, the monster that all of us know, but do you know um, how the that company started? So we are mentioning uh, uh, very interesting information. Uh, Amazon was founded by Jeff Bezos from his garage in Bellevue, Washington on July 5, uh, 1994. Initially an online marketplace for books, it has expanded into a multitude of product categories, a strategy that has earned it the moniker the everything store moniker is like a apodo uh, it has multiple sub subsidiaries including amazon web services cloud computing SUCs, autonomous vehicles and creeper systems sa satellite internet and amazon lab one two six computer hardware r d its other subsidiaries include Ring, Twitch, IMDB, and Whole Foods Market. Its acquisition of Whole Foods in August 2017 for uh, 13.4 billion substantially increased its footprint as a physical retailer. That's it. Very good, interesting. Thank you very much. Yes, Monster Amazon. So, and as you can see, there are a lot of platforms and uh, they are very big. And sometimes, I mean, if we speak uh, or we think about the logistics on that one, it's, it's huge, right? 
Anyways, I know you're tired, so we're going to finish the class by checking the attendance, and then we're going to go uh, to bed. Aida Isabel López Bonilla. I'm here, teacher. Good. Ana Verónica Hernández Rodríguez. Yeah. Present. Good. Good. Blanca Isabel Tunaca Rodríguez. Present. Good. Ernesto José Andrade Medina. Present, teacher. Good. Jonathan Ariel Figueroa Rivera. Present. Good. José Alfredo Hueso López. Present, teacher. Present. Good. Juan Roberto Velázquez Romero. Present. Good. María Julia Ramos Olivar. Present, teacher. Good. Mónica Wendy Ábalos Girón. Present. Good. Oscar Mauricio Rivera González. I have. Good. Oscar René Molina Calidonio. Yeah. Present, teacher. Nice. José Figueroa Cisneros. Present. Good. Ramiro Rafael Aguilar Díaz. Present, teacher. Good. Roberto Carlos Avilés Rivera. Sandra Yanira Gómez Romero. Present teacher. Good, Good night. Good night. Silvia Patricia Aceituno Méndez. And Veronica Elizabeth Burgos Rivas. Present teacher. Nice. It was a pleasure to be with you tonight. Have a very good night. Rest very well and see you tomorrow. Dreaming English. See you tomorrow, teacher. Have a see nice you. night. See you tomorrow, everybody. See you. See you, everybody.